Welcome to Arbroath Abbey. Did you know this place is a thousand years old? When I heard that, I was like, damn, that is one old ass building. Tell us more, Craig. The Declaration of Arbroath was really a letter written to the Pope in 1320. Basically, it said, Dear Pope, first of all, nice hat. Second of all, Scotland is independent from England and we have the right to defend it. The Pope looked it over and said, eh, all right, I will write a letter to the King of England to tell him to leave you alone. The Pope at that time was French. That's why he sounds a bit like Gerard Depardieu. Of course, he would never pee on a plane. Now, it's been argued that the Declaration of Arbroath is history's first example of support for popular sovereignty, that kings should be chosen by the people. Because up until that point, kings were chosen by a reality show competition called So You Want to Marry a Queen, which I think is still running on Bravo. Although now it's called House Hunters International. You know what this show could use right now? A little class. So please welcome First Minister of Scotland, Alex Salmond. First Minister, we're here. First Minister's right, isn't it? First Minister's right. perfect, yeah. All right. We're here in Arbroath Ar Abbey, which uh, was the site of the original Declaration of Independence for Scotland. Is that right? Yeah, 450 years before the American one. <laughs> and the American one, I, I believe, was modelled a little bit on the, the Scottish one. Is that right? That's right. In fact, in fact, there's a Senate resolution uh, which says exactly that from the, uh, 1998. And I, I think well, it's a pretty, fair, uh, a pretty fair guess. You know, about half of the signatories to the American Declaration were Scots. And Jefferson uh, himself, you know, the main, the main author of the American Declaration of Independence, because he claimed to be descended uh, from Robert the Bruce. Uh, really? So it would seem likely that he was very aware of uh, of the Declaration of Independence. Of independence. In in an independent Scotland, which of course you are championing and 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 what uh, you know is, is what you're working to achieve. Yeah. What is the role of the relationship between an independent Scotland that you propose and the United States of America? What would that look like? Friendly. Well, well friendly, friendly would be a good idea, I think. Well, <laughs> very good yeah. idea. <laughs> I mean, what happens with NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty? Does the American military work here? Well, we, we, don't, we don't actually have American bases at, at, at the present moment. But, but Scotland, would we? Scotland, well, Scotland would cooperate the same way as uh, Free Partners for Peace, so Ireland does at the present moment, right. or Sweden does. So, I mean, uh, Scotland would be part of that western nexus of nations and we'd have the the firmest and strongest of relationships with the united states of america i mean after all if we provided some of the inspiration yeah. for, the, for the american declaration of independence we've got some historical claim and after all for providing craig ferguson <laughs> uh, and then uh, uh, then uh, uh, we've got some modern claim to fame i don't think that that's going to get you anywhere with the american public but oh, i don't, but... don't, don't undersell yourself craig. <laughs> come on <laughs> now what about the... It, it, nationalism is an emotive issue, I think, isn't it? It's not really a political one, or is it? I mean, you're an, an economist by training, mm. right? So, presumably, the ramifications of an independent Scotland economically are something you're familiar with. Well, I mean, I don't think you should look at it just in money terms, but, I mean, if you wanted to look at it in money terms, we'd go from the, the 16th uh, most prosperous country in the world to, to number six. So we'd, be, uh, we'd go up ten places if you were just looking at it in financial terms. Why? Because, I mean, Scotland has got massive natural resources, oil, gas... You get to keep all that. Well, we get to keep the, the stuff that's Scottish, the yeah. geographical share. get to keep the stuff that's off the Scottish coast, the stuff off the English coast would, uh, would so go we're talking with. about oil? Well, I mean, not just oil, man. I mean, oil and gas, renewable energy, water, which is one of the great resources so of, uh, of the coming century. Scotland has plenty of water. <laughs> when uh, our mutual friend Sean Connery once said that all Scotland needed was a good roof. <laughs> Now, there's another thing. I mean, Sean Connery's famously uh, pro-independence, isn't he? Yeah. But he doesn't live here. Does that uh, have a bearing on it? I mean, I will take no public position on it because I don't live here. You know, I, I think it's, for, in a weird way, it's not really my fight. Yeah, but I mean, there are 50 million Scots, and, uh, like yourself and Sean Connery, people either Scottish born or Scottish ancestry who mm. live worldwide. I mean, they're all part of the, the, the Scottish family. I mean, even people who've got only remote connections with Scotland, generally speaking, have a, a good feeling towards Scotland. That is the most extraordinary asset internationally. It's an amazing place, but wasn't, I mean, my, my history... The second maybe, greatest you know, country in the world. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 ne I never said the second greatest country. I said the other greatest country other, in the world. Good, yeah. I, I, I may be naive, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
the, the, the thing is about the union of Scotland and the rest of the UK, England and Wales, and a part of Ireland, and let's not get into that argument, but um, to my, my history may be wrong, but it wasn't it our idea, kind of, anyway? Wasn't it, you know, through James the First and then the Union of Parliaments and the banking boys in Edinburgh saying, you know, this is a, a huge resource that we can actually use. Wasn't it really Scottish politicians, bankers and clergy that created this union in the first place? Well, certainly it was the Scottish monarchy which, which right. took over the, the English monarchy, but, but Scotland and England had a, a hundred years as independent countries sharing the same monarch, which is what we propose now. Is that now. what you propose? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, before the Union of the Parliaments, and whoever this idea of the Union of the Parliaments was, it certainly wasn't the Scottish people's idea. I mean, mm -hmm. if it had been put to a vote, if you'd had democracy uh, in Scotland in the early 18th century, like democracy came to America in the late 18th century, then the, the idea of uh, an incorporating union would have been shot down in flames. So, uh, so it wasn't the people's idea. And, you know, this, this abbey, this declaration of Arbroath, I mean, what was the actual significance of that? This declaration here, way back in the 14th century, was the first declaration, probably, certainly in European history, probably in world history, it said, look, the people are significant, and, you know, the people have a role in this, not just the monarchs, the kings, the prelates, the bardens, but the people. And that was the aspect. So you're saying it was the birth of uh, uh, enlightenment thought, perhaps? Well, it, certainly it's the birth of a kind of collective democracy, a community okay. of the realm, as they called it. And later on, of course, Scotland contributed massively to the, the intellectual advance of the 18th century, which, again, was part of the engine behind American independence. You know, see, this independence thing, it's a very catching idea. <laughs> <laughs> what about people who love Scotland but want to love it inside a United Kingdom? Are they less patriotic Scotsmen than, than yourself? No. They, uh, people have the right to express their, their, their politics and the right to express their identity. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what we're proposing is a new type of democracy for Scotland, where we control not just some things, which we do now, thanks to the, the Scottish Parliament coming back, but we control not just education and health, but the economy and our international relationships. But people can have different views of what's right and what's wrong, they're still patriotic Scots. I think what's best for Scotland is to have the people living in Scotland this, making the decisions about Scotland. I think that's the, the essence of democracy, that's my view, that's why I think Scotland should be independent. But people are entitled to disagree, in fact, they've sure. got a... I'm sure they have, will. If we have a written constitution in Scotland, which I think would be a good idea, they will have a constitutional right to disagree. Uh, that sounds familiar. What about the... So the royal family take... Uh, the, the monarchy continue mm. in, in, a, in an independent Scotland, much in the same way I imagine in Canada or in those places that used to be colonies, is that right? Well, that's right. I mean, the, the Queen's actually... Uh, head of state 16 countries around right. the world at the present moment, so it'd be nice to make it 17. So this is a great way of doing this, so that way you get an independent Scotland and you get your knighthood. <laughs> this is good. I may, I, I may have uh, burnt my boats as far as the knighthood's coming, but, uh, but, but Sean Connery's right, but you're a lord. And a, you, you play a lord in a, an upcoming uh, in, in marvelous a Disney, Disney film. Yeah. You're Lord Macintosh. That's true. Now, your, your, your lordship. If, if, if you give me a real lordship, that might be worth more to me than much as I love working for Disney. Well, I, I could make a laird or a, a, a thane, perhaps. A, a thane. thane. A thane of Scotland. Uh, uh, thane or, of Glam, Stane of Codder, and King hereafter. Or, or, that or, could or, be bad for me. Didn't that end badly for the last guy that wanted well, I'll that? I'll tell you what, I'll make you what uh, Ornie Wallace was, uh, as of Braveheart, a guardian of Scotland. Now, I like that phrase, a guardian, guardian of Scotland. Scotland. I think I might settle for that in cinema. And is, is that what you are, do you think? A guardian of Scotland, is that how you see yourself? Well, I, I, would, I think I'll just stick with the title First Minister, but I, I like this elected bit, you know, I mean, I, I've got a preference for, 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 for being elected as opposed to appointed. I think that's very civilised of you, First Minister, <laughs> and very American, if I may say so. It's really a joy. Uh, to, thanks for so much for giving us uh, your time today and, and talking to us in Northbroth Abbey. It's a lovely spot. Good luck. And great to have you back. Thanks.